G'day survivors, today we are going to go over how to set up a local test server for Daisy Modding. First of all, if you haven't installed Daisy Tools, I'll quickly run you through that. Well, the very first thing you need to do is install the Daisy Tools. Then you need to launch them. Now what we want to do is come to, we'll come to settings first and set up your P drive. Unless you have a really good reason to, I recommend just leaving everything as the default settings. Now we need to extract the game data so that we can get the vanilla source code files. So click extract game data. I'm not going to do this as I've done it already and it does take a little while. But once that's done, you'll have this P folder here. I've got a few folders added, but now we're done. We have the vanilla files. The next step is to install the Daisy server. So if you don't see these in your Steam list, make sure you have tools ticked. Install the server. You don't want to launch it yet. You just want to install the files. Once you have the files, you can go to your Steam folder. So that'll be your Steam root directory, Steam apps, common, and then you'll have your installed games folders here if this is where you've installed Daisy. If you can't find your files, just go right click, manage, browse local files in Steam. And I recommend not touching this root folder because when the Daisy server updates, when Bohemia push updates to the game, your files will be overwritten with the latest Daisy files. So what I like to do is just copy this folder into the same directory, just in my Steam directory, make a duplicate copy. Um, I've called mine test server vanilla. I also have some copies of my actual live game servers that players play on. Um, this is my vanilla test server that has basically no mods other than some admin tools, community framework, and the mod I'm working on. This is my development environment. So I'll call mine for now, I'll just call it Daisy Server uh, YouTube. Now what we want to do is copy over community framework. Uh, most mods depend on that, so we might as well include it in our root folder. And also some sort of admin tools community online tools or, or VPP admin tools. There's a bunch out there. Just pick your favorite one. Come into your workshop folder. If you can't see this, make sure to turn on show hidden files, folders, and drives in your file explorer options. Come into workshop and look for the mods you want. So CF for community framework and VPP admin tools. Copy those two folders into your root directory. Make sure to add your Steam ID to the admin tools. So for me, since I've already got this set up, I'll come into profiles, VPP admin tools, and I'll just copy that folder into here. And actually you'll notice we don't have a profiles folder here. So I'll just create one profiles, paste that in there. And now we need to set up our start batch file and our server DZ config. I'll start with the server DZ config. So let's bring this over. I'm using notepad plus plus, by the way, for all my config files. I don't use this for scripting because I think there are better tools for Daisy modding, but it's great for config files like this. It's really quick to open and it's a great piece of software. So get notepad plus plus if you don't have some preferred editor already. Uh, server name, I'll just put in vanilla uh, dev server. We don't need a password or anything. Now verify signatures. We want to turn this off. So let me just double check my original config. Yeah, so we wanna set this to zero. Otherwise, the game is always going to require our mods to be signed in order to boot into the server. You want this turned on on your live game server on your dedicated machine or Nitrado server or whatever, however you host your game server. On your local server, this will just be a pain in the ass. So turn it off. If you're running VPP admin tools, I recommend turning off the password as well. I'll paste that in there. And then everything else here is optional. For a test server, I find leaving the default settings here is fine. And if you don't know what all these settings do, I'll leave a link to the Bohemia documentation on server config so that you can see what your options are. There's a bunch of settings that aren't listed here by default that you might find useful to play around with. The last thing to mention here is changing your map. This is where you do it. Here are the vanilla files. Sakal is Sakal. Chinaris Plus, and then Enoch for Livonia. If you're running a modded map like Deer Isle or Namalsk, you'll need to add the corresponding mod to your root folder here, and also download the missions folder to put in here off their GitHub. So just check the um, workshop, Steam Workshop page for your 
modded map to find the files you need to put in here. All right, so that's it. Our server is set up, save this file. Uh, one last thing I wanna mention that will save you a ton of time when you're testing is come into the root folder of whichever map you're going to test on. Go to DB, go to globals, and down here at time login, time log out, set this to three seconds instead of 15 seconds. So you don't have to sit around waiting every time you load in. Final step before we can boot up the server is to set up our batch file. So here I have a batch file template, start.bat. I'll leave this code in the video description if you want to copy mine. All we're doing is setting the config file, our profiles folder, and our mod list. So I'll change this to uh, your test mod and let's give it a test. So now we can double click this batch file. Make sure to click allow here when this pops up and our server's booting up. I put a hashtag at the start of the file just so this file uh, sits at the top of my file structure here, if you're wondering. So now what I would do is uh, boot into the server and make sure our admin tools are working. So go to LAN, refresh the list. Here's our vanilla dev server. Now it's loading up my Zen test mod dev. Before we continue, let me copy that over here. Zen test mod dev into YouTube. Um, and in this folder, the mod.cpp file is optional. This just describes your mod in game. I'll leave that there for now. So all we need here is a mod folder to do development in. So you can call this whatever you want. Just make sure to update your batch file. Every time you add or remove a mod, update this list here. Make sure to put a semicolon and no spaces and keep the at sign and all of that. Um, in this folder, all we need is an add-ons folder. And in here is where we would put our PBO file. And actually, since I already have this folder set up on my real test server and not this one I'm currently setting up, I'll change this to uh, put a YT on the end for YouTube. And now I can show you how to add this to your mod list before you load into the server. So I'll show you what I mean. This would be your mod folder. When you start up the server and you go to join, you'll have this problem here, choose action for the missing mod. Since it's not going to be on the Steam Workshop and I don't recommend keeping it there if you're developing, obviously when it comes to testing it on your dedicated server, you'll need to push it to the workshop, but on your local server, all you need to do is go to mods, click add local mod, and then come to your server root folder. So I like to make a shortcut to this. So what I did is just create a shortcut to my Steam common folder and you can just put it in your P drives root directory. And that's a quick way to jump to your servers. Go to our test server and then select our mod folder. And now we have our mod added and we can join the server with the mod here. So let's do that real quick and make sure admin tools are working. And while that server boots up, one other thing that's worth creating a shortcut to is your local client daisy logs. So if I open this up, you might need to do some digging to find this folder on your on your computer, but mine is in C users and then the username, app data, local, and then Daisy. This is where your client side script logs will be. So create a shortcut to this Daisy folder and put it in your P drive. You'll thank me later when it comes to debugging your scripts and you don't have to dig around finding that folder every time. It's also worth mentioning that this folder can get very uh, clunked up with giant log files over time, especially if you do something that breaks your server and you get something like this crash log where, where I've screwed something up in a mod and it spammed my crash logs for ages. So make sure to come in here and delete these files regularly. Even if you're just playing the game and, you, and you're not modding, you'll wanna delete those files regularly. It clogs up your hard drive pretty quick. So our template mod is running. We can jump in game now and admin tools are working. Perfect. So we're good to start developing. Also, while you are developing your mods, you'll want to check your server logs regularly as well. So depending on your workflow, it could be worth having a shortcut to your profiles folder in here as well, because this is the server side logs that you'll need to check regularly for debugging. The reason I also like to use Notepad++ is because if something happens in game that causes a print log, then this file will automatically reload that text to the print log. So you can have this on a second monitor and while you're debugging, you can just check it every now and then to see what's printed. Um, and obviously always check your crash logs too. We don't have any now because I've deleted them, but if we go to a different test server here, 
I'll go to one of my main ones and we go to profiles. There should be crash logs in here. Here we go. So you'll want to check these logs frequently and fix any errors that pop up in here related to your mod. Because if you ignore these over time, they can lead to server instability, uh, null pointer issues, and eventually server crashing if you don't stay on top of these. So we have our test server set up. Let me show you how to build the mod to it now. So open up add-on builder. This is the source folder. So for me, that's going to be my template folder that I've been working on through this little series. Click OK. And now browse to destination. I want to come to my local test server, come to my mod folder, add-ons, and pack to here. You won't be able to pack while your server's running or while your game's running. You'll get build failed. So close out of these before you pack your mod. Now, obviously, if you're working on a mod that doesn't run online, or a complex mod that requires uh, debugging tools, then you might want to use offline mode, Diag, instead of the vanilla game. All right, so some final notes before I wrap up are, if your uh, Daisy server vanilla files update, like Bohemia pushes an update, you'll need to update your cloned server. To do that, just come to the Daisy server folder and just sort by date modified. All you'll need to copy is this, XE executable, and usually some of the DLLs might update. So just check by date. So the last update for me was on the 8th of August. So the only files I need to copy is this one, the add-ons folder and the DTA folder. So I would just copy them and override my uh, test server with those files. Something else to mention is if this circle here turns orange, uh, that usually means one of your mods is out of date with what you have loaded on your client mods. So the server's mods do not match the uh, client mods. That will often happen when one of these mods update. So any mods you're using as a dependency, like on my test server, I have several uh, mods that I use as dependencies. When one of these update, I'll get that little orange icon here. All I do then is I go to my Daisy workshop folder, search by date modified, and I copy over all the mods I use for my test server and just override them to update everything to the latest version. And one last thing to mention, if you need to wipe your server because you've changed something that corrupts your persistence or something like adding on store load and on store save to items, which I'll go over in future scripting videos. Uh, but if you need to wipe your server, come into the map folder you are running and delete the storage folder. It'll wipe the entire map and all players from the database and give you a fresh start. We'll go over our server config in a different video because that's its own scope. But for today, that'll do. I hope you found this interesting and helpful. Good luck with your modding, guys.